Hello. Whom of you has never had a friend who was suffering stress, anxiety, depression, tension? Whom of you has never had a moment that you were worried that you were forgetting some words? Or worried if your memory is still functioning well? Because centuries ago, this only happened when you were 85. But recently, we discover in our society that even young people, I even get emails from school children who are asking me, Doctor, am I suffering a burnout? And unfortunately, it starts at younger and younger ages. And what happens is that when stress, whatever kind of stress that happens in our lives, is stimulating our adrenaline, our cortisol, and several other stress hormones. There's a kind of empoisoning of the brain. And the first organ that's attacked is part of our brain, the hippocampus, where the concentration in our memory is situated. And because of that, <coughs> we are getting difficulty in being focused on that what we want on whom we want to be and what we want to achieve in life. And more and more we start to experience when stress is happening, negative stress at least, that we have the feeling like we, we don't have our brain as an organ anymore in order to make the right decisions and to live the happy life. It's like some people start to feel the hopelessness and the sadness. Some people start to feel anxiety and tension. Others are getting so tired that, that it's like they say, I'm broken down and, and I, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm, I'm completely losing myself. And this is happening more and more frequently. It's happening more and more since the mobile phone, since Facebook, since Messenger, since a lot of influences are coming to our brain, and our brain cannot digest it anymore <coughs> at the speed that we try to live our lives and to try to be the persons who we want to be. Now, however, there is hope. Because what we see in our survey, in our results, analyzing <coughs> 3,000 patients who have followed a program where we are analyzing what works and what doesn't work, we have been able now to develop protocols where people who are in that situation within three weeks of time, so the average patient who follows this type of, of protocols, in three weeks of time reaches normal levels of stress, anxiety and depressivity again. So technically, it is possible to decrease the stress in a pretty short amount of time, in several weeks of time. And if we take an antidepressive, medication it also takes about three weeks of time and a good self-help system takes on average three weeks of time for some people more for some people less and what we measured is that the level of life satisfaction and happiness can increase with 40 percent in three weeks of time it has been measured on 3,000 people now what makes that people fail in living these happy lives. Because we are all born to live, the li to live the lives that we want to live, to become the person we want to be. We have a, a kind of innate desire to become the person we want to be. And it's like our software goes there. And when we see that something makes it impossible for us to reach this dream and this goal, this negative stress starts to happen. But what makes that some people can cope with it and some others don't? Those who cope with it, are those, um, are at least those who fail, are those who first of all don't make a decision that it's a priority to manage this. In our society where stress <coughs> is so frequent around us. So the first reason why people fail is they don't make a decision. Maybe they go to the physician, maybe to the psychologist, but that doesn't even mean they took the decision. From today on, I'm going to change my life and do something about it. The second reason is 
they don't have a, a system. They, they don't know how to do it. So the second reason why people don't find solutions is they don't have a system. The third reason is they quite often don't have access to knowledge. And you could say, yeah, there is a lot of you on YouTube, but where to start to find what's good knowledge and what's not the right knowledge. So a lot of people don't succeed because they don't have access to the right type of insights and knowledge. A fourth reason is that they don't work on it with a system on a daily, consistent basis. Because whatever you do, if you want to make a change in your life, it requires changing a habit. Because when you are in a depression or in a state of anxiety or in a burnout, it's because you have developed habits that are not adapted to a happy life anymore. And your challenge is to develop new habits. And, and that's what's starting to fail at a certain moment. And when I realized that, I was wondering with, uh, with some colleagues, what can we do about it? Because um, a lot of people don't go to the physician. A lot of people don't go to the psychiatrist or the psychologist. And even if they would go, they might be on a waiting list for three weeks, for five weeks, uh, in some countries even for seven months, before they get access to the right kind of help. And maybe they even will not have the right match with the right type of therapist. So when I discovered that, and when I discovered that a lot of people in my medical practice called me and they say, no, I've been sent by this doctor. I said, oh, that's strange because he's already five years retired. Yeah, doctor, but uh, he gave me your telephone number six years ago, but I didn't have the courage to call you. So I was thinking, what can we do to make something more accessible and easier? And at that moment, we discovered that with the internet there's a lot of possibilities. And we try to see what can we do to offer a daily solution. Because if you don't change your habit on a daily basis, if you only go once a week to the psychotherapist or once every two weeks, and you don't do something every day to train the new skills and to reverse even the biological process in your brain, because what we have seen that is even if some brain cells are damaged biologically because of the chronic stress, you can reverse most of that by training these brain areas in the right way. But then you need a consistent system. So what's very important is that, that science is focusing more and more not only on having a nice talk to give someone a nice insight, but to help people to deliver them a system where step by step they can build up the competence to rebuild new habits. And that's what we have seen now in, in our research at this moment, we have like 400,000 people who took our free test on, on, on the internet, on, on the website 15minutesforme.com. And uh, about 3,000 of them followed the full program. And when we analyze their results, we see that the average client on, on the 3,000 uh, that are in our sample database, average client, when they really do it every day, when they really take 15 minutes a day, and, and what do they do? They do self-reflection. Asking yourself kind of questions, whom do I want to be? What type of a life do I want to have? What type of a mother or father do I want to be for my children? What type of a professional do I want to be? What type of a friend do I want to be? So what type of a person do I want to be? And what am I already doing that works in that direction? And that's what a good psychotherapist or software can do. Ask you the right questions so that you start to get insight in what's useful for me. And the funny thing is, when I analyzed the first clients who did our program, they were giving us solutions. I was taking my antidepressive medication and so on. So I was a bit scared because I didn't want to encourage medication too much, although it can be useful from time to time. But then after a week, I saw that the responses were shifting to, I did some meditation. And that's already better, but it's still something that you have to do in a systematic way. And then after some weeks, the type of answers that came were, I went to the swimming pool with my three-year-old daughter. I went for a walk, I listened to some music, I called a friend on the telephone. And then we see that what people need is to reconnect with the original solutions and resources of normal, happy life. And when they can reconnect again, and that's what the brain makes impossible when you are in this negative vicious circle, it becomes almost impossible to reconnect the brain to that what you already know from before. 
And when you ask people with a systematic approach the right questions on a daily basis, at that moment, people will start to find solutions. So if you're interested to find out, go to the website 50minutesforme.com and do the test and have a look. Thanks a lot.